right, so that was some nice funk opener. Let's do a sound check and make sure everything sounds all right before we kick it over to Battletech Advanced 3062. How am I sounding to you people? I am hoping I sound all right. Let's see what's going on. But yeah, just sitting here. Oh, getting settled in, feeling my age, as some of us do on some of these days. Good evening and welcome to everyone. But yeah, so here we are doing what we do, which is occasionally, uh, I would say on rare occasion, it is uh, semi-competent. Semi, like three out of five, not, not really five out of five competency. But like my own channel and content, I think we'll get by just fine. So if we're sounding fine, five by five, what we need to do is uh, proceed to check in with the aristocrats. I feel like uh, Mr. Rogers, where he's like, let's go to the land of make-believe, you know, and you, <laughs> you crawl through and you show the little land of make-believe. You know, Mr. Trolley takes you to the land of make-believe, and you just have your little fun moment. And it feels, you know, nice and cozy and comfy. And uh, this is this is my little land of battle tag. So we're gonna we're gonna go on the little war crimes express and go to go to the Van Zant Free State Militia, uh, Bravo Company, the aristocrats, in their mission abroad to find, colonize, and bring back. <clears throat> I hope everyone is as well as can be on a random Tuesday night. I'm drinking my coffee. And thank you guys for checking out my history movie. I made a history movie with my friends. After so many years of people saying, you need to go watch, uh, or you need to make a history movie, we did. And damn the algorithm, I don't give a fuck what, what YouTube thinks. I'm just glad everybody showed up. And what's really amazing is um, I heard something... I heard something gorgeous, and I just want to share it with you guys, because we're, we're pretty, we're pretty kind of low-key guys when it comes down to, like, happy stuff. Uh, small things make us very happy. Very simple things make us very happy. And, um, we had a wonderful, and I do mean wonderful notice, um, our, our little history movie got shown um, in front of a civil air patrol flight and a whole bunches of families and everyone and really enjoyed it and have a whole bunch of people come together and really you know do something in meat space not just over the internet you know stuff like that's humbling so you know I just wanted to say like should that feel good Someone in the Civil Air Patrol knows who the fuck we are. That's a mistake. And here we go. Main screen, turn on. Launch all zig. Da, 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 da. You know what's funny? Is I see some of these effects um, for, for what's going on in this. And the thing is, is I know how this is all done. Because we do similar things. We actually did that dropship uh, drop for Van Zandt. We did that whole sequence exactly the same way. And, uh, yeah, it's really fun to see stuff like that and realize, Oh shit, we've done that. We've done the stuff the professionals do. So it, it, it really makes you uh, realize you've made some progress in this world when you can identify what's going on. You're like, oh yeah, see, that's actually multiple layers, and what you're doing here is, oh, we actually have that effect, and it's quite nice. Uh, yeah. All right, so here we go. We're going to do, don't call me an outstanding orator. I, I occasionally, occasionally talk battle tech. And if you guys will let me do so and continue to do so, I would be honored. I am just another voice in the choir, however. Just a guy. Not anything special. Just a schmuck. So, let's go uh, have fun. Ah, Pointman Frosty. Hey, Tex, guess what? No notice. I figured it's YouTube. They, they like doing that to us. I'm just a guy, though. Um, nothing, nothing too special. Nothing too terribly special. 
and is I mean it's it's one of those things where I like to tell people if anyone thinks that I I feel that I deserve or anything anything bigger I feel lucky to have what I have on YouTube at all this is a weird time to make content so thank you guys for showing up and checking back anyways Uh, what occasional Macho Man Randy Savage impersonator do, Tex? Probably. Oh yeah! I'm about to drop the hammer of indiscriminate justice, and we're gonna go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the man in the... Yeah, I mean, it's easy to Macho Man. The problem is, is you have to take those breaths he does. <laughs> and it's... it's Because he sits there and he gets excited over something. And so he has a launch point, and he's like, I'm gonna squeeze you like a cheese sandwich. And you're like, what does that mean? And then you don't have time to think about what he's saying because he just does like 10 other things. And it all kind of like seven degrees of Kevin Bacon just all goes together in this one long point that returns back to where he started. And it's brilliant. Um, Yeah, I mean, Macho Man's fucking great. But, uh, yeah, Macho Man. Okay, so where we were at last, someone had a bonk on the head, and they were going to be in the hospital for about three, four, ever. They, they are probably, okay, let's see. What do you say? You want to go beat down on a ranting drunk? Can do. Uh, salvage? Yes, please. Let's, let's take some of the salvage, and then we're just going to go over there. With our happy, you know, mech relocation and repurposing team. And uh, we're going to escort them to the afterlife. Let's let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. Only one unit? Damn. All right. Let's take the... Let's take... Damn, only one unit. We have to be careful. Titus Urbanicus is going gonna, is gonna to have to go away. I take a tank... That'd be funny, but hold on. Okay, the Warhammer Deluxe. It is a deluxe Warhammer. It has many nice parts. Let's go. Let's go do a fight. All right, here we go. But yeah, I mean, Macho Man was a guy who just had like a bagpipe of angst, like all the social upheaval and angst of the 80s and all the cocaine-fueled nitromethane mayhem of the 80s. He had like a bagpipe of that, like as an emotion, and he just wailed on it through his voice and elbow drops. He, was, he painted a tapestry of violence and nonsensical disjointed word salad of sentences across the 80s, and he's, he's majestic for that. He's like a unicorn. Of, of all of these insane principles of the 80s. If you see Macho Man, you see neon lights. You can't help it. It is the natural light under which you could observe him. I mean, it's one of those things. Macho Man was a once in a, once in a while. All right. It's, it's just one drunk instead of a lance of them. Okay. All right, so here we go. Fear the Warhammer. Twisted Firestarter. I should have brought the Firestarter. I could just burn them to death. But the problem with the Firestarter yes. is inevitably, with a Firestarter, you find out it does not have all the armor. And if they have more armor than you do, they typically can figure it out. So it's an Orion. All right. I like this. I'm lining this up. Okay, let's just see. I like my odds here. Now, I am worried though. Because I'm sitting here looking at an MRM-20 and an MRM-30 on an Orion. That will fucking suck very shortly, so I need to make that thing blow up real quick. Please, 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 LRM-20, do something. Please, for the love of God. Why does it have an MRM-50 equivalency? Just... Please fall down. Oh, boy. 
See, this is where the bad happens. Once he moves into missile plow range. Okay. He's using the fan the room method. Ow. All right. Here's um, mm. we're gonna we're gonna have to maneuver a bit. Do a bit of that maneuvering over this way. Okay. Like fucking Orions. I'm getting better hits than he is. Now, if he comes too close, this could be unpleasant. That auto cannon has all the chance to do very bad things. Ow! This is proceeding to hurt more than my feelings. See, that's what I meant, that more than my feelings. Damn. Well. Guess we lose that one. What a bra bra bra. 50 MRMs hurts really bad. And hey, Big Red, how's it going? Uh, and I saw a comment earlier. Uh, periphery video win? Eventually. I'm, I'm working on the hunchback right now. We're thinking it's gonna be about an hour and 50 minutes. I know that, uh... It's gonna be good. I mean, that's just a bad blap there. But missiles definitely know where they are. This game is fun. Yeah, XL engines do that. <laughs> they just they just do that. Um, so now we need to come up with some funds while we figure out uh, how, to, how to put a mech back together. Let's just have some fun. Let's just go ahead and get in, get in this thing that we can't fix anymore. And try to put most of it back together. Most of it. I mean, eh, most of it. Now, when you don't have all the parts you need, but you have some of the parts you need, you can generally make do. So two ER large lasers is not a bad idea. Nah, it's not a bad idea at all. All right, let's put let's put some ER large lasers in this. Oh man, yeah, that Orion just clapped me. But that can happen. That's one of the reasons why you really have to like BattleTech is because just inevitably you'll have what you believe is a heroic moment, and then it isn't. And I really do enjoy that. I, I really, really, really like uh, how how BattleTech can just absolutely blow you out of the water. There's no impervious to nothing, you know, uh, or impervious to everything stuff. It's quite good. Ah, the stone rhino. The big slow thing with lots of lots of ammo problems. The stone rhino in Battletech is like a camo wrapped Bentley. It's a statement in something, but you're not sure what. Whenever I've seen a stone rhino in a tabletop game, it is the equivalent of the game designer telling you that this is a tough fight, but Inevitably, you can just overcome it in the same way as any other D&D trap. There is a fixed solution. The Stone Rhino is not fast. And where do I find models to paint and use for tabletop? I don't paint that many models. Uh, I'm colorblind. It's kind of a waste on me. So the Warhammer's broken for now. <laughs> Yeah, we're just going to have to leave it be. We're going to have to make do with more primitive war machines. But no, I'm not a fan of the Stone Rhino. I, I think it's kind of overblown. I've never had good luck with it in tabletop, and I've only ever seen it used by people in hypothetical what-ifs. Like, if you had this with this pilots, it could be great. And I'm like, yes, but there's so many better machines. It's one of those things where, like, in World War II uh, historians, you'll sit there and be talking about the pluses and minuses of various pieces of armor in World War II, and then there's that guy who comes up and goes, yeah, but the mouse 
was the biggest tank ever made and it was so big that it had this and that and the mouse was so huge and, the, and all they can do is talk about that. The stone rhino is that in Battletech. It is, it is the person bringing up the, here's the thing that is technically bigger and has more firepower, but it's a triangle with guns and it's not that fast and speed is life to an extent. It just doesn't have the mobility. I mean, any light mech swarm would eat its lunch. Oh, God, I was sleeping. What do you want? Mech warrior training complete. Commander. Training complete. Now, if you're talking about, like, heavy hitters that are, like, sons of bitches that are always worth their training weight, confirmed. like, stuff like the Blood Asp, the Kodiak, holy God. And Tabletop, that will just push everything out of your zip code. Alright, so we have wounded people and we need to we need to go find something softer because we are soft babbies. We we bit off more than we could chew. We thought we were a lot more intelligent, and we in fact are not. So let's let's go let's just go back to our little soft place in the periphery and try to find a, a, a planet where they will take great pity on us and pay us lots of money. By your command. I love the Blood Asp and I love the Kodiak. Those are both like heavy hitters that are great. I, I think the Warhawk is overplayed a lot. I don't think it's that great. I think the Mad Cat Mark II is a better Mad Cat and trying to think of other super, like the Supernova is really good. It's really expensive though. Uh, yes, we'll, we'll fix stuff even though we're about to go broke. Uh oh, we may in fact go broke. No, we won't. We can sell crap. We have so much crap. Stone Rhino just is not interesting to me as as a mech. Some things just as well don't speak to you on an aesthetic level, and you're not sure if they're just offensive to you or offensive in principle. I can't explain it. It's that whole simulation versus simulacrum thing. I have most of a Hetzer. It's almost not worth building a Hetzer. I do not need another urban mech. I have enough urban mech parts. Alright. Onward to poor town. The direwolf I'm split on. Because normally when you see the direwolf in any game, it's a win button. It's, wow, you can put 57 tons of weapons in a thing. And then, you know, you end up with like 7 ERPPCs or something crazy. Which is fine. I like the Blood Asp, though. I like... My favorite, like, one of my favorite mechs of the Inner Sphere is the Hauptmann. I think that's a cool mech. Um, I had one that was three LB-20 uh, <laughs> XACs that I really like. And that's fine. I mean, everyone has a mech that just speaks, speaks to them. I mean, I know a lot of people that when they first saw the uh, Mad Cat on the box for, like, Mech Warrior 2, that was, that was it. That was the end of the world for them. It was love, you know. But I'm just gonna start throwing stuff out. We're nearly broke, Commander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. We're not a charity. We're almost at, we're almost at the place where money is made. Unfortunately, a lot of people in the hospital. Stalker's a good mech. I just have bad fucking luck with it. Every stalker I have turns into a mushroom cloud. Case, no case. Excel engines, no Excel engines. Every stalker I have is unlimited time. <laughs> every single one. Every, every single one. It's, everyone has, okay. Everyone has a mech, I, I wager, that will blow up in their face every single time they field it, no matter how good it is. I've, you know, I have that, I have that same problem. 
is I just have these mechs where people are like, oh, these are great, and then I go take it. And I'm that one guy who just gets murdered. All right, let's, we, we need some, we need some, uh, we need to make some money as best we can, because we got crippled mechs, and we're a very shit mech company. Nobody needs to know how shit, though. Or that the mech commander maybe is in a coma for a while. <laughs> He may be having himself a ha having himself a heck and nap. All right, uh, the thug, thug is great. I always have trouble with it. I love the thug. I'm shit with a thug. All right, we can't take the head, sir. That's fine. Ah, <sighs> Marauders, I know that pain. Uh, I use. I wish I could make the Marauder two work. Uh, can't. I've, I've never had a good luck with that. I've never had good luck with the Royal Atlases. I've never had good luck with half of the Irby models, but I wager that's everybody, because people use those things like fucking chalks. You just put them under the wheels of something, and you're like, look, I slowed it down. <laughs> I slowed it down cheaply. Um, oh yeah, Annihilators are another one where someone plays Annihilator in like MechWarrior 4 or 5 and they go, oh my god, this thing claps. And then they play an Annihilator in Tabletop and they go, oh my god, this thing eats missiles. And it's like, yeah. Oh, man. I've had nothing but good luck with catapults. Uh, even just stock model ones. The only thing... I wish it was better with the flash, man. I you never see those in games. They never show the flash bulb or any of those guys. I like those Max. Ah, uh, there's a lot of really like I don't know. The Mauler is one of those things where in a sim like, driving a, a, the Mauler in a sim feels great. Driving the Mauler in a sim feels great. Because you got, like, the guns at, like, nipple level. And then you've got the arms that can move around. And then you got missiles above that. So you can shoot missiles over stuff. You can do all sorts of things. And you got firing points. In tabletop, I've always had them explode on me. Command interface initiated. The flash bulb's a good mech. The reason we call it a flash bulb is because it's also used up very quickly. A little bit of heat will, uh... Yeah. <laughs> they hot. You're asking a lot of an old guy. There. Okay. Now, I've seen some really shit mech builds, though. Okay, now, look. Let's, let's have, let's agree that we have here tonight a relatively good representative and representation, um, cross-section, I should say, of the Battletech community. And I think we can all agree that we all have favorite mechs and, and mechs that, like, you know, would be funny or meme -y or what, theoretically, blah, 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 in whatever game, in whatever system, in tabletop or not. But, and why does Grandpa like travel? Brother, he works for me. That's, that's why. Everyone's crazy here. But look, here's, here's the thing. Is my, one of my favorite things are the trash builds you see someone put together just because. <laughs> In Battletech. And you go, why? Um, there was a really, really good charger I saw someone make. That had like a, a two-handed sword. And it was just chase people with like a, it had a hockey mask. And his job was just to chase people and be like the Ayatollah of rock and roller with a sword. Really kind of a dumb but brilliant build for something. I know a lot of people just start oh, mentioning no. lambs. And of course those are just trash builds by normal. But you know, I, mm. let's make a very expensive mech. That's a very shitty mech, and combine it with a very expensive airplane. It's a very shitty airplane. Make it suck at both, and if it takes the slightest bit of damage, it is incapable of doing one or the other. Now mass produce them. You're asking a lot of an old guy. 
All right, here we go. Establish a sit rep. All right. We'll have a sit rep. No problem. I'm sure this isn't a trap. All right, let's see. The place has been slagged. Maybe there's more we can find out in the main compound. They should have put voice acting in. And I'd heard that they lost all of their original voice acting. Uh, like there, there'd been a problem. I'd heard that there'd been like a really bad problem with uh, like a data storage fire thing. Something to that tune, some sort of disaster. And that disaster had like removed a lot of the voice acting that had been in the base game, obviously not the mod. Um, I'm not sure if that's true or not, but I'd heard that. But as far as like Dream Frankenmix, like one of the ones I thought that was really cool uh, was a hunchback that had a gladius and a sh tower shield. And I was like, cool. <laughs> It was really bonkers. I was like, why not a Centurion? And they said, fuck, that would have been better. <laughs> they they didn't think it through, but they kitbashed it, and it was great. Alright, we're going to go up the road, which is surely not mined. We're just going to run up the road very quickly. Surely no one will ever catch on. Oh, man. Okay. The Pin the Mighty says it was a flood. It rained really bad in Seattle and flooded the room with all their data. Oh, that sucks. Because imagine, I imagine that there was... Because the voice that was there was great. I was like, where's the rest of it? And I was like, oh, man, that sucks. I want to know why they won't make another one. All right, let's see. Link up with the main compound. Now, if I had my way and I could take whatever I want, I'd have nothing but fast armor at this point. All right. Yeah, it's probably related to licensing. I, I'm sure there's a logical answer for it. It's. I'm just curious, because it seems like a natural... I mean, good God. This is a fantastic game, but... Imagine if instead of Unity... They put it in something like... Uh, I don't know. Any other engine with deformable terrain, perhaps? But you're right, it's probably a licensing thing. Most stuff in sci-fi settings is. Moving to position. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna just go up here. Moving to position. Heading out. All right, let's see. Okay, bad guys incoming, defend buildings. Okay, destroy invading lands. Got it. Oh, man. What are we going to do? Destroy the invading lance. Where is it? Oh, oh, what did they bring? Let's see. Javelin. Uh-huh. Razorback. Uh-huh. Whitworth? What is this? An austerity hit squad? Boo! I mean, boo, seriously. All right, you know what? Fuck these guys. I have artillery. I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna have to blow them to pieces. I'm sorry, but that's just boo. All right, let's go have ourselves an ass kicking. Ready 
If I can get over there with that fire starter, we can have ourselves a barbecue. Yeah, I mean, this feels like a lance, but, like, if this lance had a name, instead of, like, the killers or the baby murderers, it would be, like, filler material. <laughs> this lance should be called austerity with a lowercase a. This lance's drink of choice is victory gin. If this lance saw a class for sale, it wouldn't know what to shoplift. Alright, let's get over there and just hurt these people. I've hurt their feelings enough. Alright. Here we go. How's it going? We're just gonna go around here with a shadow hawk. The not a hunchback. Oh, it's gonna be good times. Oh man, they... Hmm. It is a lot of audacity. Alright, here we go. The MRM-40 has come within range. The Death Star is in firing range. 46%! Oh man. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. Hey, Whitworth. Heard you like missiles. There's more where that came from. Keep the change, you son of a bitch. They can help us. And yeah, if any of these pilots could read, they'd be very upset. But don't worry. Uh, okay. The missile knows where they are. And that's more than enough. The javelin? Yeah, I think so. Oh, dear. It appears the Arrow 4 found it. All right, let's see. Receiving you. Now, I have to get this fire starter in range, but I did put a heavy flamer on it, which is really critically important. Never tell Grandpa the odds. Yeah, he, he, he wouldn't understand them. He barely understands time. Yeah, the missiles knew where the Warhammer was, too. Unfortunately. If you can put two AC-20s in a catapult, boy howdy, you better. You shouldn't ask for permission. It's a catapult. If it fits, it sits, baby. Alright, here we go. Now, uh, uh, Titus Urbanicus, forward! To glory! I cast laser. Uh, no. A little more. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're max. We're not mids here. Ooh! That'll do. The Whitworth. Get off my lawn. Bulls of steel. Oh wow, he's giving it the full... Oh, oh. He used medium lasers? That... Wow. Wow. That guy's very angry. He used the Care Bear stare on me. Huh. Alright. I should shoot back. Okay, that's a miss, but they know I have an AC-20. That's important. The AC-20 is within range. It should be shooting. Alright. MRM-40. Choices, choices, choices. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, javelin down on the low. Alright, here we go. Don't worry about that floating turret. That just happens sometimes. Ancient Star League technology. Gotta take out the Moon Kaiser. I'm here. Alright, here we go. We're just gonna go ahead and move the chaparral there. Oh, uh, let's see. Arrow 4. Arrow 4. Javelin. Bye-bye. Missile. 
Oh! That's how you know it's done right. See, you don't have to be smart. The missile knows where it's going. Man, that guy's really mad. Alright, well, let's just deal with him. I did bring the heavy flamer. I think it's time to turn up the heat. Ah, there you go. Oh, it's a good time. It's a wonderful day in the neighborhood. On my way. Oh, hello, Whitworth. Goodbye, Whitworth. Titus Urbanicus has struck you. Nope, it, the McDonald's toy of Max is uh, taking a beating. Nope, never mind. It it broke. It broke. Yep, Whitworth is doing what it does best, leaving after accomplishing zero. I deployed our battle max. Then what happened? They left. Oh. Wow. Yeah, that's about when you pull the handle on the yeet seat and clap yourself up to orbit. So where's the last guy at? Oh, that guy. Alright, well, look, I don't like him here, so I'm gonna just hit the go away button. Which, if you have RL-20 launchers, that's the go away button. That's a lot of heat. My framer is empty. Now, I don't want to use arrow 4 at point blank range. Let's let's go ahead and not use that. Let's let's have the rest of our lance mates survive. And let's just wait for our allies to help. Yay, allied turrets are helping. Ow! Don't do that. Standing by. All right, here we go. Fire starter. Yes. More. Rocking in all weapon systems. Oh yes. No retreat. Fifty-six heat's a lot of heat. Target taking a critical hit. Oh, indeed. Man, what a bad day. Oh, an engine crit. That's where it's, uh, that's where it gets appreciably bad very quickly. Oh, boy. Alright. Let's get down here. Razorback, good day, sir. Bombast laser fire. Ah, raking fire across the stern of the Razorback. Wow. Well... Payday. Mission success. Heavy on the suck, though. Man, we're gonna have to scrape up what pieces we find. It's not, there's not gonna be, it, yeah, that's, that's bad. The salvage we get would probably fit in like a wheelbarrow. We got some money. Thankfully, nothing's too fucked up. We got parts of a razor bag, parts of a javelin, parts of a Whitworth. Ew. Why? Here, I'll just... Oh, they gave me the Whitworth parts. Ew. Gross. Man, it's like if you go to somebody's party and they have a really gross cake that they're 
friend made or something and they're like oh would you like this vegan cake it's conflict free cake and you're like no thank you I don't like no thanks no no thank you for me and they just give you some anyways and you have to stand there with it and you know you're not going to enjoy it that is what they just did to me by giving me that Whitworth that Whitworth is sad if sad was a vitamin the Whitworth would be on the side of it Razorback, no, thank you. I'm gonna put you away. Raven, I'm keeping. Fire starters, I have two. Well, I have one of, so I don't need multiples. All right, let's see. Whitworth, no, thank you. Uh, goodbye. Good job. Hetzer, I, I don't need more Hetzers. They're not worth it. They're not worth collecting. I can make a Javelin. Cool. That mech you wanted is Neat. back online. So now I have another Javelin. Cool. Not bad. Not bad. So I need to find another engine for this Warhammer, which will turn up sooner or later. But until that point, we have to do some austerity missions because we're very, very sad. We're very, very sad people. We have very low money and lesser competence. So I need to I need to slice off more of a of a reasonable a reasonable ish. Hmm. Challenge, as it were. So I'm gonna have my coffee here. Oh, you shouldn't trust me with good max. That's that's a mistake. If you gave me something nice, it's lost on me. Most of my friends have at various points tried to gift me various things and it, it does not work. Okay, I could go work for the Capellans. But I'd rather not do that. Because they might murder me anyways. This is that era where that can happen. Alright, let me see. You know what, let's just go here. Calculating course now, Commander. Calculating. Velocity. No, I'm not trying to bash on anybody. I'm not trying to bash on anybody, uh, you know, for for having cake that's, you know, like conflict-free, you know, soy, whatever, but it's not for me. And I, I know that a lot of people will say it's cake, but it's minus this or that or whichever, and I'm like, no. We'll fix that, uh, we'll fix that, uh, that Warhammer. We just got to find some parts for it. We were very brave in finding a Warhammer. Very brave indeed. And also extremely stupid. We risked it for the biscuit. And now we have to be sad and sorrowful for it. But this is Battletech. It's got to be about give and take. And if you're not skirting finances like a poor orbit and Kerbal, I mean, it doesn't feel like a periphery story, does it? We're almost completely out of cash. What about JJ Beeples? He can't remember his full name, and they're like, "Yeah, but the bank's really calling on that thing." Looks like we've arrived, Commander. All right, let's see. Visit store. No, I have some friends that are vegan that are actually pretty cool because they make. They make their own food, and actually a lot of it's southwestern stuff, so you get kick-ass hot sauce and shit. Ooh, a Savannah Master. That is something that is so fast you can drive it up your own ass. That is a great way to drive all the way to an ammunition explosion. And tabletop, these are just nasty. The Hunter's good, actually, for what you get. Find me Space Cube. Space Cube, eh? Sounds like you're almost out of cash. Yeah, probably am. Oh, look, it's everyone's favorite, Mr. Train. Alright, so let's go see if we can find a job. Now that we've hopped a little bit to the other side of the border. Let's see, planetary government? Oh, yeah, see, this is easy. This is all easy, just cakewalk stuff. We can just pound through this. Yeah, easy peasy. All we gotta do is fight the Capellans a little bit. It's just their government. Don't worry, it's just... What's the worst that could happen? 
We're just fighting a government in a brush war. It's just a little brush war. It's don't worry about it, right? Don't don't worry about it. Let's let's agree not to, you know. Oh man. Oh. Yeah. Don't get old. So, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our boys, and we're gonna go out there and shoot people with our dudes, and it'll be fine. And and then the Whitworth, we're just gonna forget we ever had one. And if any more Whitworths show up, we're gonna throw them in the bin. We're gonna cut them to pieces. And hey, Boat Bomber. Boat Bomber and I actually visited, uh, we, we, we visited and hung out, and we, we saw the Christmas Bullet live. Uh, we watched it live at his house. It was really cool. Uh, you know, that was, that was like, that was awesome. And then we, we went and had Sky Steak, which is a story we're going to tell on a future podcast. Sky Steak. Command interface initiated. All right, here we go. Yeah, uh -huh. In the name of the Chancellor, something, some I can't, the radio, I don't understand the words, I just shrug. Wow, that, that guy's fast. Okay, so, destroy the Capellan garrison, destroy the smuggler base, got it, something, something, and friendly forces for the coordinate something. Alright, so here we go. Let's go. We're gonna, we're gonna... Yeah, the Sky Stink is a story. More of an adventure, I would say. Why are you using a hovercraft through the trees? That would be like Plinko going through the woods. It'd just be like boom, 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 and you would not know where you were going. The enemy would hear you for fifty miles away. No shooting, just running. Got it. No, Sky Snake is a real place. It's a real dinner, and we will tell you where it is. And as Metal Slug, uh, this is with mods. This is BattleTech Advance thirty sixty two. Oh, yeah. So, 3062 I like. I've also played Rogue Tech before on this stream. Copy that. 3062 is what I got in right now. But either or, whichever you want. No big deal. Well, it was uh, steak in the sky. You have to go up high in the sky to eat it. It's sky steak. That's part of the principle of the serving, you know. Sky Steak is hilarious. Sky Steak is going to be a good story. Boat Bomber, they couldn't even make... They, they couldn't even make, like, medium well or medium rare right. It was hilarious, though. It's going to be a good time, don't worry. Sky steak. Standing by. Oh man. Did I ever play Battletech Advanced? You mean what I'm playing right now? Have I played what I'm playing right now? From time to time. Yeah. From time to time, yes. For orders. But Sky Steak is a restaurant where I ordered a uh, steak medium well because I'd never I hadn't eaten this chain in a long time, and um, I got the whole cross section of meat temperatures in one steak to where it was like rare on one end and it was beyond well done. It was fucking congratulations on the other end. So it was like rare to congratulations in one steak and every two inches was a different temperature. It was like a training guide for meat, like a calibration guide for a manual. Sky steak, that was a $62 fucking steak. Sky steak. Oh, we're gonna tell that story. How's it going? It's great. 
We got reservations. They acted very hoity-toity as a restaurant. They served me the whole fucking chart. What's funny is like uh, you end up you end up with a hoity-toity restaurant, and we're just like, man, this sucks. And then we went and had better food elsewhere, and that's fine. Uh, but I I realized I had functionally had better steak at the Waffle House, and that's a problem. Sky steak. Hey. Hey. Going as fast as I can. Why don't you act like you're paid lots of money? Because you are. Oh, there's no sides for that amount of money. The sides were an additional $20. $20 for a... So, it, like... Ask yourself. How much is $20 of, uh... How much is $20 of asparagus? Right? Because I'll tell you how much they gave us for 20 bucks, and it was five pieces of asparagus. $20. So, yeah. Sky Steak. Sky Steak. And yet, cooking a steak that bad is almost like someone's resignation letter. You know what I mean? It's quiet quitting. Sorry, $20. I'd have to convert that to Canuck bucks. So about 490 Canadian dollars, I believe. <laughs> I think it's 40 Canadian tire money. I'm not good at exchange rates. I was once asked on the fly to convert something to like Taiwanese money. And I said, what? Who does that? And they're like, right. They just assumed because I knew a lot of stuff I could do that. I'm like, I'm not fucking data from Star Trek. Oh, man. You know, I think that's kind of interesting, though. Someone doing a whole a whole cross-section cut of the whole steak at once. I think that's rather fascinating. I think they should probably do that on purpose. Ah! An Anubis. Interesting. I will start fires and blow it up. That's a miss. Yeah, the Shoney's was also bad. I mean, a Shoney's waiter is like, where you complain, like, hey, this is, like, not good, or this is not safe cooking for this food. And they're like, what do you want to do about it? And you're like, okay, never mind. <laughs> I don't want to fight the guy at Shoney's. You can say, like, hey, this is unsafe, or, you know, I don't like my chicken medium rare. But if they look like they're about to stab you, don't have that fight. It's that not worth not trying to tell a, an everyone clap story for Reddit. It really isn't. It, it, it's, it's one of those things of, if someone is going to lose their mind at work, don't be that guy in the video. Be the person who goes, I understand. Just say, ah, I see. Yes, you want this more than I do. Good day. Copy that. Uh, let's see. Another Anubis. Oh man, that is not a good no. We're just gonna we're not even gonna waste that. Alright, we're gonna get a little closer here. Okay, now I brought five hundred missiles. There's a J. Edgar. We got vehicles in the woods. It's time to blow up the Anubis, though. Only 10% of these will hit. But that's enough. I fired enough missiles to let him know I know where he lives. 
God, no. That's what you want to hear from the person connected to the fucking artillery. What no? I mean, just show of hands, you don't have to upvote or anything, this is not trying to gauge the metric, but if you were in charge of an Aero 4 battery, and you knew no one on the planet, let alone the star system, had seen such a thing in hundreds of years, wouldn't you be more than excited to be the one who reintroduces it to the age of warfare? Wouldn't you be cheerful? Would you not? I'm just saying. You can care a little bit more at work. Locking in target. I'm wow. Heavy damage to an enemy I missed, but I blew up a bunch of stuff. Let's see, because I think that if you had a, if you had a bit of muscle Receiving you. with you, and you said, hey, do you want to use the big gun? They're going to be excited, you know? It's, it's important to people like that. You got to love your job. Why else would you do it? All right, we're going to need to move that. Ah, damn it. Standing by. All right, we're going to have to sprint. I'm going to have to burn these sons of bitches down. Hey, sub brief. And yet, when it comes down to artillery, you just got to drop Artie on people. You know, just let it fall where it may. See what happens. Let's see. Receiving you. Titus Urbanicus. Forward to glory, sir. All right, let's see. What do we got? We got artillery. Is king of the battlefield, where artillery cannot swim. So that's why there is a navy. Ooh. See, that bombast laser is working real nice. Oh, 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 there we go. Okay, let's see. What do we have going here? Just a little bit of light pelting. Some medium lasers. Nothing too bad. Okay. Someone's knocking with heavier. What else you got? And it's weird to see where there is crossover subbrief. I mean, it's like a lot of people like similar sorts of stuff, like history, uh, military miniatures, miniature war games, science fiction. I don't think there's a single person I haven't talked to in the last 10 or 15 years that hasn't made good references to stuff like Star Trek or Babylon 5 or stuff being really formative in their years and still stuff they think about. I mean, even though that's kind of generic -y sci fi by modern standards with what have you in hard sci fi, I think it's beautiful to think that so many people still have the basics in their heart from Asimov to Heinlein to Clark and also, you know, Star Trek. It's really cool. Let's see. Let's let's get in there. Alright, so here's the Anubis. And the Anubis doesn't realize this, but he is like at MRM 40 point blank range. Now the game says I ain't gonna hit shit, but I I disagree. All I need to do is sandpaper that guy a bit. And then I bring up the Shadow Hawk. And I blow this guy away. 
All right, here we go. Man, he's got a lot of evasion. He's a quick one, ain't he? Ooh! Come on. We're just gonna have to get in here and do some kung fu. Kung fu time! All right, here we here we go. Oh yes. And I really like, um, once a year I watch all of TOS, and then I watch all of TNG, and then I watch all of DS9, and then somewhere around Voyager I start skipping episodes. Um, I call it the cycle. It's an autistic thing I do, but I, I enjoy it. Okay, quad medium laser turret. Pegasus, she's a fast son of a bitch. Wield APC SRM, J. Edgar... All right, what else we got in the back? Well, you know what? Let's just shoot this laser turret here. Three-pointer. Okay, we blew up stuff in the area. Some other building collapsed. But you know what? Just... Good job. Dear Grid Square, I am the missile. I'm coming toward your direction, and I don't know what I'm doing. Please warn anyone who sees me in the air to know my arrival is imminent. Thank you. Bang. Alright, let's see. And do I include the movies in there? Uh, yes. I put the original six movies in there. I don't always watch all of the TNG movies. Because some of them I just am like, eh. There's good parts, but it's hard to get into. Burn. See, that's what you get. You bring a fancy mech, I'll set it on fire. Well, that's the thing that's weird is, like, I speak with Subbrief, I've spoken with Perun. Uh, there's a lot of crossover in these communities. It's one of those things where you just kind of sit there and it's nice to have something like nerd shit to talk about. Because even if we have different backgrounds, worlds, views, cultures, whatever, we can sit there and go, Stompy robots are fucking cool. And then just go from there. And it's really nice. Ooh. You know, if I had an urban mech stomp up on me and just start clapping people, start clapping people with a bombard laser, I'd be like, fuck. I would not be happy. I would, I would just make that face and just be like, fuck. Voyager's okay. Uh, Equinox 1 and 2. Good episode. Um... Near the end, there was a really good episode with the with the doctor called Virtuoso. That's a really good episode about creating stuff and finding out that it's quite easy to accidentally find fame. That's a really mature episode for TV. It really is. Um, but aside from that, I have difficulty remembering all the all the decent Voyager episodes. But those, those are the ones that stand out to me, like Equinox 1 and 2 and Virtuoso. Those two episodes I can remember. Alright, so there's a Pegasus, and I have an AC-20. The Pegasus now has a hole in it, the size of an AC-20. Now, these two things are very close together, and that's because they happened in sequence. It's pretty amazing. So, this person who ran away, they got set on fire a bit, is going to get more missiles. There we go. Like, I think that with Voyager, they just had writing teams come in and take stabs at stuff, and some of it was brilliant. And then that team would move on and be like, oh, I got a real job, and then go somewhere else. But I'm not alone in thinking it was hard to, like, find sequences or arcs that were as good as stuff that was presented in DS9, right? Oh, nice. 
See, Aero Four is fantastic. And uh, Battlestar Galactica from 2003 is something I loved until the final episode. Because the final episode, there was the writer's strike, and I think it had been like the creator and two other guys had written more shit in during that, and so you ended up with an ending where it was supposed to end with them finding Earth and then it just ending. Everything after that was crap they just added in that was completely unnecessary and undermined everything. They should have just left things unresolved and had mysticism ultimately be something that is just weird, but then they tried to just tie it all together very quickly and yeah, it wasn't great. Alright, so I set him on fire. Yeah, Campton Janeway did a lot of stuff that if you if you did that in Starfleet, like in the fleet, I think you would have gotten fired. But they were like, ah, oh, she's on the far side of the galaxy, it's alright. Irby say no. Blap. The Irby has spoken. Alright, so let's see. Enemy turn. I never saw all of Farscape. Um never never saw all of that. But I know there's a lot of really decent sci-fi shows that had, you know, unfortunate runs at best. Ah, they attempt to strike my Shadowhawk. They will find my battle station is fully operational. I have come for a replacement engine. I am a moron. Fast Blast USA, let them have it. Trees don't protect shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that feels good. Yeah, that's a good feel. Oh, right, right. Oh, that's a good one. So, anyways. Uh, yeah, it's... Oh, no. So, Mr. Welch says, Mr. Welch, one of the Internet's greatest grognards and, and absolute, like, king, king grognard, one of my friends, says, according to the BSG showrunner, the network shut down multiple endings until they chose the most cheap one. That's more tragic than what I had heard, which means I believe it. On my way. Ooh! Oh, what a way to go. That's a kill. What I would love to do is just edit all the crazy shit Janeway did into like a five minute clip to the song Freeze Frame. And just call it a career in review. And yeah, man, this seems like overkill and a waste of money. Anyways, we're gonna keep doing it. Oh look. Oh, oh no, another vehicle. Alright, well, let's just go ahead and walk up here to hurt people. That's what we do. Uh-oh. Let's see, nothing? Alright. Let's, let's see if our allies do anything. I know there's a lot of Stargates. Mike's making me watch all of the original Stargate because I've never seen all of it. Uh, we are slowly working through them, but we diverted and Mike started to watch MacGyver. Uh, which is a different show altogether. Ah, nothing like a building destroying laser. Yeah, that Arrow 4 was worth way more than the turret. I mean, that was oceans more than the turret.
All right, let's see what next. Okay, I'm gonna walk over here. A little bit of fire there. We're gonna do that. A little bit ow. So we gotta blow up some of these buildings or something. Thank God I brought the indiscriminate missile hose. All right, there we go. All we gotta do is just blow stuff up. Good to go. A little bit of urban renewal, as they like to call it. Oh, nothing's in range. Got it. Oh, except for the RL twenties, but I'm gonna hold. All right, let's see. I'm here. Chaparral missile artillery tank. Because arrow four is nice. Why destroy one building when you can destroy multiple building? Arrow four. Goodbye. Enemy structure eliminated. When you see the mushroom cloud, call for more missiles. Arrow four. Shut up, me. Man, look at that J. Edgar. He's just had to watch everyone die. He's he's having to just think about it. Man, this guy's gonna have a bad time. Alright, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just roll up here. And uh, see if that J. Edgar is uh, gonna be in range. There we go. And then he's not in range yet. That's unfortunate. Because if he comes into range, he's going to get fire started. Alright, let's see. I'm the repo man on this run, that's for sure. We gotta try to find an engine for that uh, Warhammer we broke. Okay, let's see. Bombast laser. I, I could just destroy stuff, which is cool. Full charge. I'm using my full power just this once. Roger. Holy crap. Go, Irby. Alright, did that J. Edgar just fall over? Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. You know what's really fun is it's I've been talking with people who've been sharing the text talks history around, which is really cool. Uh, we're just almost completely uh, from the last good data I have from my network says that uh, we're spread more through word of mouth than YouTube's actual suggestions. So welcome to the underground, guys. This is a fun time. By fun, I mean really weird. But thank you is what I'm saying. Thank you. Oh, it's time to burn something down. What what do we got? Uh-huh. That one. That one's different. But, um, yeah, yeah, that one's got a lot of hit points. Don't like it. Uh, yeah, my allies are here for emotional support, you know? So, uh, they, they kind of show up and, uh... They, they just show up and they're like, you got this. Thank you, you got this. You know, they just say that. They they do attaboys. They're, they're not like strategic support. They're more the yeah, emotional support. Like, they're an emotional support llama, okay? They're the equivalent of that on a battlefield. Which means they're not doing much and I'm probably going to have to scoop them up in a bucket. But that's fine. I am presume that's part of the babysitting fee. Locked on. I have to show them how to do war crimes, I guess. Alrighty.
All right, let's see. What do we got? We're gonna just drive this forward and point the missile at things. Uh uh. Uh uh. Uh uh. You. You're different. Goodbye. Ooh. Oh man, Metal Slug, it's so weird. I I literally, literally started out as just somebody recording RTS binging, because that was a RTS channel to start off with. This was back in the era when everyone did essentially long plays on YouTube, because I've been on this platform for like 12 fucking years now. I've seen so many strange changes to everything. And it's weird. Um, I started off as a long play channel, and then I had my run of Space Station 13 through what many people have started to call it a golden era before it got discovered by the general public. Um, and I, I recorded a lot of the last of that era, and then I actually tracked down and spoke to the of. Uh, the creator of Space Station 13 and got him to actually correct the history like the game wasn't stolen and many other things that went with it. Really remarkably brilliant person and a fantastic interview. Um, and then I started to get into just Battletech and I've just kind of just shifted ever so often into new you know just new things really. Spirit destroyed. Oh, that could be a little expensive in time. But not really. I mean, it's just a little expensive. It's not tremendously expensive. How's it going? All right, let's do what we gotta do. They say we should evacuate, but I don't really believe in that. I, I think that sounds like running. And they paint us for a show, really. Oh, wow. That, let's not use that in the real. Negative damage. The, the, that time we shot them out and in front of us is probably not the best show. All right, let's just, let's just go forward here. Do our best. And destroy one of these two things. Let's see. Let's blow that up. Nice. Hey. Okay, let's go. And let's light this one up. A nice soft pitch. There we go. Oh, well done. Go, go, go. That should do it. Nice. You know that's how you get your urban renewal apart. I mean, it's it's probably gotta cost a pretty penny to bring uh, concrete in in the middle of the jungle, then pave that out. Yeah, you don't go far when you're on fire, really. It's just, no. It is what it is. But he, he, you know, I mean, it must cost a lot of money to just truck all this concrete out here. So, I mean, we could reuse this. It could be a nice picnic site. It, I mean, we could get fun for the whole family. Drive in theater, huh? Imagine a hike in theater. That sounds miserable, and you would probably worry about animals, I guess, but you know. And as far as what you should play in this, I would say play the original campaign first. That's not a bad intro, but play whatever pleases you, certainly. I am not a voice of... I'm no Battletech guru, I'm no expert, and I am <laughs> by certain uh, no leading voice in this community. I, I have my preferences, but I mean, as everyone should, find whatever pleases you and enjoy it. And if you can share it with friends, all the better. Moving to position. 
The original campaign scratched the itch. I really enjoyed that. Here we go. Okay, I missed. Yeah, I mean, you could put a nice hotel out there. A luxury hunting lodge. Uh, you know, um... Could be a nice retreat up here. I mean, sure, we're gonna have to wait for these forest fires to go out, but not a problem. Not a problem. Not not really a problem at all. Let's let's let them have it. Uh, MRM forty. You know what? Yeah. I don't know how many missiles I needed, but that was 40. And look, it's the WPPL-76 Twitch Archive. Hey, Diggs. Mission success. I was too brave to accept their surrender. I am a mighty warrior. You know, I'm just going to say this. It's it's one of those things in the inner sphere where you realize after the battle, the guy who has to salvage all this is is going to have a good time. It'd be fun. It'd be really fun to uh, just dig through and see what sort of neat little trinkets you could find. It'd be pretty pleasant, I think. Let's see. Ah, uh, the Anubis. No thank you. No thank you. HVAC. Mm, not really a good core. 40 core. Wow. Oh, cool. Stealth stuff. Who has stealth stuff? Huh. Oh, well. Let's take some of these and sell it. Shift right click to sell. Okay. Yeah, I'll just sell this back to him. <laughs> I don't care about that. Give me my money. I think that would just be kind of the fun of it. I, I think that sort of... I, I think that it would be honestly be like hardship shipbreakers. You know, hard space shipbreakers. You'd just be in the yard breaking mechs down all day trying to find the good stuff. And be like, ooh, i got to get the piles of my omer. I've got to... Try to recover the Indo Steel, if any. I've got, oh man, that's a good case system. I gotta get that out of there. It'd be kind of one part forklift and like basket, you know, like a cherry picker simulator. You know what I mean? Uh, probably a bit of uh, running a rivet gun, especially for an inner sphere mech repair. And then be kind of a neat game, I think, just uh, sitting in there working on it. Yeah, salvage and Battletech is, I mean, good lord, the secondary arms market in Battletech is vast. It's truly vast. Training complete. Alright, let's see. What's next? Ready for order. Well, yeah, you just gotta hose the cockpit out now and then. That's it. Ready for orders. There we go. Standing by. Time Lord. Orders. See, this this is like a band, Time Lord 88. This would be like a, a techno or a house band. It would be like, tonight, Time Lord 88 presents Disco Apocalypse. What? No. That lady just doesn't give a fuck. What do you need? He's got cats, you know? That's pretty cool. Yes, Commander. Yes, Commander. All right, so we need to go find some more boys. That's also on my uh, to-do list. So let's see. Financial report, 27 days. Hiring all. We are in the Oregon Coalition. Ah, this person's name is Beef. Not THE Beef. Different person. New mech warriors available. All right, let's see. What do we got here? What the hell? Target prediction. Then why does it have the Illuminati symbol? Where does he gain his powers from? That's a little alarming, isn't it? Some guy's like, hey, I see the future. And you're like, well, how much of it? And he's like, don't worry about it. It'll be all right. And you're like, that doesn't sound right. And he just smiles. 
reality folds in. Alright, one day to fix that. Mostly everything is fixed, which is nice. Except for that Warhammer. That thing is fucking broken. That is very broken as a mech. Ah, yes. Parts of a wheeled APC, also known as tires. Ah, uh, nope. Uh, yep. Bushwhacker if I can. I have parts of many nice mechs, which is quite pleasant. If I had the beef, I think I'd be kicking everyone's ass. That guy's really good at games. Retro Knight with Time Lord 88. Yeah, Rosie, I think that's probably correct. Sounds like it'd be a good time. Well, we'll fix this Warhammer one day. Or, stupidly, I can put a very small engine in it and then up armor and up gun it into basically a pocket assault mech. Which, if I could find the parts, certainly would be doable. So, I'm gonna have to think about doing that because I can't find any 200 plus rated engines, which is fine. Let's see. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You're in. Yeah, alright. Destroy some bandits. Got it. Let me just. I want that salvage. I want the salvage. That's what I want. Titus Urbanicus. I will not take him, but I will take the Hetzer. Beef will drive the Hetzer. When you have someone named Beef, you know, you just gotta, you gotta give them something of substance, like a Hetzer. Not saying the Hepster's great, or the Hetzer is great, it's just, it's, it's not. But it's memorable. You, every time someone puts a Hetzer on the field, uh, you usually open your mouth. And you go, is that a Hetzer? And they nod. They never say yes. Yes, that's a Hetzer. They just nod. They acknowledge the Hetzer exists. They brought it. It's not going to help you. The, the Hetzer doesn't. The Hetzer is, again, like a chalk that you put under something to, you know, slow it down. It's like a speed bump that's been maybe not installed right, so you barely feel it. Like, if you had an 80s car earlier, you know, it would just sway. It would rock front to back as you go over things. The Hetzer is something that, if it showed up in a battlefield, you know, box or a crate, it, it would come 12 to a pack. That guy's name is Crab Shack. Any relation to Love Shack? Alright. Destroy enemy units. Alright, here we go. Let's run. It says destroy enemy units, so we're just going to go destroy enemy units. That sounds like a very vague ROE. And a very vague ROE doesn't sound very good. Let's move. Oh, I'm going to send that Hetzer up there to do business. See, the Hetzer's great. It's like a canary in a coal mine. It lets you know when you're about to be in trouble. Standing by. If the Hetzer explodes, you're in range. Check back in for more Hetzer facts with Mr. Tex. The Hetzer is made of triangles. Some of them are even meeting in the middle with welds. But not all of them. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Yep, see, the Hetzer has found them. They will come to the Hetzer, and soon the Hetzer- Oh, good lord, that's a lot of medium lasers. What in the mother- Alright, let's see. What in the cinnamon toast fuck was that? If that is a 4P hunchback or similar, I am very intrigued all of a sudden. If it's a turret or something, I'm very sad. Ow, 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 don't hurt Hetzer. It's very simple. <laughs> yeah, destroy the enemy units. Imagine landing with a dropship after folding space to get there, and you have a note from your employer that has coordinates, and it just says, destroy enemy units. And you're like, which ones? No further instructions. 
Just after you've killed a few things within range for a bit, after you've slayed a few things within range for a bit, after you've murderated, after you've done your full-on Trogdor, you know, the check clears. And you have no idea what you were supposed to do. I think that's most mercenary work. All right, let's see. All right, we're gonna walk forward with that MRM. We're gonna try to get within range. Yeah, going fast is scary, especially in Battletech. You biff a few dice rolls and you're done. All right, let's see. How's it going? Oh, oh, there we go. You got it. Going flat out. Let's do this thing. All right, what are they bringing? All right, so. Any guesses on Max? Ready for orders. Let's see. Let's take a guess. Uh, what do we got? Javelin, Pegasus, Pegasus with SRM, unknown, unknown, and unknown. Fine. Javelin, eh? All right. Uh-oh. This guy may hetz my hetzer. My god, he's in hetzing range. Oh, he didn't hetz. He went after the fire starter? What? System's holding. All right, that's it. Please don't be a swayback. Please don't be a swayback. I kind of want it to be a swayback, but I also kind of want it to not be a swayback. Titus Urbanicus, forward. Forward, the tight. Yes. Give him the kick. Yeah, and burn the pavement. No joy. All right. Standing All right. All right, head sir. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Hetzer versus javelin, fire. Miss. <laughs> Yeah. Well, at least I let them know the headsers okay. there. Okay. Wow, that is some driving. Okay, all we gotta do is just obliterate anyone sitting there and give them a little bit of tea off. Oop. Well done. You gotta watch out for Pegasi. Uh, they can be fast, they do have SRMs and other stuff, and they hurt. They have a lot of movement. They're hard to hit. Enemy flanking. Oh my god, they're shooting the Hetzer, which has no armor to really worry about. So I'm not losing so much, as having less Hetzer is not really a problem. It's cheap. Alright, let's move the AC-20 up. We're just gonna run down the road. Man, what a terrible road. There's no guardrail or anything. They really should pay me to tear this down. Okay. That that wasn't Negative damage. Repeat. Negative damage. You could say you missed. You could just say you missed. I mean, it's it's the same thing. Heads are gonna heads, baby. Alright. Let's see. All right, Grandpa. All right, Grandpa, move up here. Grandpa, no like. Which one of these no like? You no like. No, no want. Goodbye.
All right, that's some of those collided. Uh, not not many, but enough. That's why vehicles are fun. That's why they're also a son of a bitch. Seems like the Hetzer is just going unnoticed, which is fine. They drove a... They're... Mmm. At least an LRM-10? Oh, and a Narc. It's... Ooh. That's not good. I don't like it. Receiving you. All right. Firestarter. Good day. Vehicle fire. Just a peel, a little bit of, a little bit of the old barbecue. Give him a little bit of the old razzle dazzle, a little bit of the old shake and bake. Ow! Stop it! That's mean. All right, here we go. Receiving you. We gotta have a fight, but I need to kill this Pegasus. Come on, Herbie. Kick his tits in. Yeah! Titus Abanicus has spoken! Fuck yeah. He's a little Herbie that could. Ready for orders. Alright, let's move. The AC-20 heads are here. Uh, no. Wait, there's the... Mm. Alright, let's see if we can do this. There. Alright. Oh, wow. Talk about a handbrake turn. Oh! Hitzer has hetzed. Yes. Good job, Hetzer. Now, I need to stay mobile. And I'm gonna rotate to bring fire to the people trying to cross. Okay, they have an Osiris. That is boiling alive. Let's let him have it. There you go. Ah, you have chosen death, hero. Your will is low, hero. All right, let's see. We're just gonna move this. Oh, 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 oh. Almost. All right. MRM forty. Goodbye. Yes, you cannot hover or ground effect away if you explode. It's about the violence, just the casual application of violence. Ah, uh, let's see what we got. Uh oh. Well, that's not nice. Seems like someone forgot their heat sinks today, so we're gonna go fix that for them. Uh oh. It's a hovercraft trying to sneak up on us. I'm gonna give him a little bit of zip zap. Ow. All right, let's see. Oh. Okay. That hurts. This hurts bad. Oh, Gramps. All right, let's get up here and just make this flambe. There we go. Confirmed. Yep. All right, 43 heat. That's a lot. What are you going to accomplish with 43 heat other than pilot dead? What happens now? Man, he is not letting off. He's gonna boil alive, though. That's fine. Commander. Titus Urbanicus has 
Chosen. A new foe. Strike him down. Charge the laser. On it. Ooh. Right in the leg. It's a precise strike. Receiving you. All right. Hetzer. The Hetzer is all about being unexpected. Confirmed. Hetzer has moved. Hetzer has engaged. Hetzer angry. Nope. Hetzer That's has destroyed. spoken. Hetzer going to... What's the phrase? Ah, yes. Hetz. See, the Hetzer is all about that. What now? Moving to position. Alrighty. You say so. Ooh, structure exposed. Nice. A few more volleys and they should probably get the idea. Oh wait, these are just the reinforcements? Alright. Well, it seems like they're gonna do this. They're gonna try to make this last. Alright, here we go. You, overheat guy. Dare you accuse me of not having enough missiles to share with the class? I am the missile conductor. Ooh! Well, there goes the salvage. And the body. That's gonna be a close casket. Oof! Well, that works. Yeah, Steel Shanks. Beef Hetzer does sound like a porn star from Battletech. Beef Hetzer in? Ooh, a raven! That's not the name of the movie. I'll come up with a better name. Ooh, a raven is not the name of the movie. Please do not draw that. I am followed by too many NSFW artists. Okay, here we go. Beef Hetzer in? All right, what do we got? There's a raven. I just realized I'm sitting on the fusion reactor. Yeah, yeah, you should probably realize that when you sign the release. All right, so that's a raven, and I want it. Now it is time to make it hot. Burn. Oh, what's going on? I'm gonna have a fight. Oh, no, no, no. Leave Titus of Banicus alone. Light damage, Commander. Yes, Commander. All right, so let's just go over here. Right. Titus Urbanicus is turning to fight someone. Titus Urbanicus has chosen a new target. Maximum charge. Firing a full salvo. Ooh. All right, let's see. Standing by. Quoth the Raven, arrow four. Well, I could do that. But I need the Hetzer to continue to assert battlefield dominance. Wow! Well, I hate to say this, but this Hetzer's lucky. What a Hetzer. Let's all have a round of applause for the Hetzer for surviving three quarters of the battle. I think that that's amazing. That's amazing. That's just... You know, I just... Come on, guys. A Hetzer... The whole three quarters of the battle just showing up. That's amazing. That is really, really nice. Most answers I've had has been the thing that finds out that they have accurate guns. Quoth the Raven, arrow four. Oh, ooh. There we go. Oh dear. Yep. 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 
There you go. And oh wow. Fuck yeah. Mission successful. Way to go, Hetzer. See, a Hetzer is about 650 million, or not, 650,000 sea bills. That's what a Hetzer is. Uh, the AC-20 is about 300,000 sea bills, so it lets you know how much of the Hetzer is Hetzer. And when I use the term armor to describe a Hetzer, I'm describing the role, not in what it has, because the Hetzer doesn't. It, it doesn't have much. It just has a gun. It lets the gun do the talking. All right, let's take them raven parts. Give me the raven part. Give to me the raven parts. I desire them. Beef heads are. Beef heads are in. AC 20. It sounds almost like a really bad, like, canon film series, because, you know, you had Lost in that, or Missing in Action 1 and 2, which, believe it or not, were shot in the opposite, uh, they were intent, they were released in the wrong order. The second movie was actually the first one shot, but the second film that they shot was better than the first, and they realized if they showed the first movie and then the second one, um, it would kill the, the audience for it. So they just flipped them when they released them. But they shot him at the same time. It's, it, it smacks of canon film stuff. I think that's funny. Alright, let's get into our storage. Uh, we have almost enough parts to make a raven. Oh, yeah. That nifty asshole is cleared for fighting. Good enough. So, we have a 4X Raven. How cool is that? We got SRM ammo and medium lasers and stomps around and he finds people, finds friends and burns them alive and, I mean, helps us find them. You know what I mean. He's a, he's a good guy. He's a good guy, Mr. Raven. He's here to help. Oh man, that Hetzer. That Hetzer's done some shit. That Hetzer's seen some things. That Hetzer has seen the end of days. Alright, seek and destroy. Uh-huh, pirate military units. Uh-huh. Trying to get my reputation up so I can get more salvage and more mag parts and stuff. Because I, I, I too wish to do the battle of teching. The fire starter's in the shop, so I have to take Titus Urbanicus and similar wastrels to combat. Here we go. Alrighty. <laughs> Beef hats are in. Heavy lance. Yeah, that sounds like something. I'm sure Battletech is... It's one of those things that I think that RimWorld uh, kind of captured. And I think RimWorld did this really well. Um, in the game RimWorld, you have TV. And it's like, why wouldn't you have TV in the far future? Because are they going to take something and put it into an HPG broadcast and then send that broadcast for just average shit? No, that's going to be for the really special, high-end, premium package sorts of stuff. 90% of your entertainment is probably going to be fairly low tech and very low effort. So I imagine that most of the planets in Battletech, especially the periphery, are a wash of UHF and VHF stations. And it's like 1970s public access. And yeah, when I talk about uh, canon films, I'm talking about Golden Globus, right? Golden Globus Productions. Alright, here we go. We are going to destroy a pirate lance. There's a lance of pirates. And apparently some of my lance is in the ocean. And is, is just underwater. And can't get anywhere. And can, can more or less... Uh, exist in the ocean. They are Titus Urbanicus is now under the sea for all time. Okay, Noted. Under go. the sea. Here we go. Moving to position. Good. 
And you guys can upvote at will, but I'm not sure if that's going to help. I mean, there's probably a few hundred of you watching, but if you put too many upvotes at once, YouTube will think that, uh, you know, you're a bunch of robots. Like every time they try to throttle us. Okay, the, yeah, I, I have two guys that are basically have chosen Bioshock. They're like, uh, boss. Ah, it's deep there. And I'm like, ah, how deep? And they're like, you know, and I'm like, ah, that deep. Tex, use the special actions. I, I know I can. I just forget them from right. time to time. Sensor lock, attack ground, abilities. Yeah, let's see. Erratic maneuvering, careful maneuvers. That's not going to help me here, being under the water. Got it. Yeah, it's not going to help. I'm going to try to put it on careful maneuvers and see if that'll do anything. All right. We'll see. There. Okay. Oh, it looks like I can with careful maneuvers. Just barely. That's tragic. So I have to crawl from under the ocean. I have to go fight from Bioshock as Hetzer goes over the mountain. But thanks for the tip. I appreciate it. Not the greatest at games. Then again, I have old channel proving that. So I, any of the help I can, I appreciate. All right, abilities. Careful maneuvers. Confirm. All right, and brace. Roger that. Digging in. Aye, aye. Let's just keep going. Moving to position. On it. All right. Thanks, guys. Ready for orders. All right. Let's see. You know what? Let's use erratic maneuvering. See what happens. Units cannot move through deep water. All right, looks Bad like no. Good to go. Unless I use careful maneuvers. On I gotta get to move. lighter water very carefully. What does the Hetzer see? What do your Hetzer eyes see, Legolas? It's like mountain, mountain scary. Good job, Hetzer. I love how it has one headlight, because two would be expensive. Wonder what the crush rating is on an Irby? Probably seven. What? No. And you're like, seven what? Six? Five? Four? <laughs> Going as fast as I can. It's probably not much. It's probably measured in fractions of seconds. Look, you just some some people like going underwater. Some people like the underwater. Alright, here we go. Alright, here we go. Can you get the bins in a mic? We'll find out. Waiting for order. Imagine getting that on the radio. Hey, we're not sure if you get the bins, so you know, don't eat anything. They're like what? Years later, the Irby emerges like the shadow of Innsmouth. All right, let's see. Ability, yeah, careful maneuvers. Position confirmed. Um, under the sea, boys. Standing by. The Hetzer. The Hetzer can barely handle, P handle PSI and the tires. It's not going to... Handle being underwater very good. Ready for orders. All right, so we're gonna have to find our way over and around the mountain, where the bad mans are up there. I'm here. We're just gonna go oh, over boy. the river here and through the go. woods to Grandmother's house. We go. It'll be a good time. Oh, oh, there we go. We got some fun. Oh, God, I was sleeping. What do you want? Oh, man. 
You know what's fun is uh, we're almost near the end of Fallout 2. Almost near the end of Fallout 2 on the Courtesy Flush, which we've been playing on Wednesdays. And guess what? After that, we get to Fallout 3, which Mike, I don't think, has ever played all the way through. Mike's been watching us play 1 and 2. Could you imagine it playing the third one without ever playing it? Oh, man. I really want to see what he does. And then I get to do New Vegas when we go through that cycle. I, I get to do New Vegas. Goat gets to do four. And, uh, yeah. Heading out. All right. So we're just going to slowly crawl out from under the ocean. I, what are the odds that he nukes Megaton? That's a good one. You guys should place your bets on the beats of Fallout 3. Okay, we got a Panther and a Primitive Commando. What does it mean? It's got an internal combustion engine. Hitzer has spoken! Wow. This Hitzer is clapping people. Oh god, now they're shooting back. You cannot stop Hetzer. I am Hetzer, man. Hey. Greetings. Guten Tag. Arrow 4. There you go. Have some of that. Yep. Oh, man. He's unsettled. When mushroom clouds show up, you know you fucked up. It's There's no ifs, ands, or buts around that. Mushroom clouds equals oops. When people bring up the strategic ruler, you have problems. Well, time to set everything on fire. My framer is empty. And Garrus, the well, the mundanus has. We are, I definitely have a sequel. Um, I've already written it, and I, I will put them through the sequel at some point. But yes, thank you for enjoying the Magistrata Mundanus. Wow. That looks unfortunate. Oh man, your crap mech exploded. I would clap, but that exploding was just kind of what I counted on. And nobody claps at something you'd expect happening, happening. I mean... Wow. What kind of panther is that? What... What kind of panther is that? What kind of... What in the... Alright. Let's see if the deep sea crew... Somewhere Position beyond confirmed. the sea. No, 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 Hetzer, Hetzer, this is this this is great. An evening of Hetzing. Mission successful. Hetz, 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 Hetz. Wow. You know, I'm just gonna tell you. The Hetzer did it. And those guys who are under the ocean are probably gonna just live there now. Because we're never gonna get them out. Good job, Hetzer. Good job. It's the Panther PNT 11 PA. It's a periphery mech. Huh. You could go look this up in their wiki. They have everything on the Battletech Advanced wiki, so you can you can just go 
Look it up. I'm not taking the primitive commando, that's for fucking sure. I'll take panther parts, though. Alright. Man! That Hetson is gonna hats. They belong to the sea now. Taken to the deeps and drawn beneath the wave for all time. To arise in the elder day. Something, something. I, I don't know if the guys under the water are going to get a paycheck. You're just going to have to lean down and be like, Bud, you didn't even show up for work. You just walked around underwater. And he's going to be like, bro, I showed up for work. And I'd be like, no, you, you played beyond the sea the whole time. You know, like, that's a good song. And I'm like, that's irrelevant. I mean, you don't you dare bring Bobby fucking Darren into this. That's mean. Track down these survivors and finish them for good. But what if we don't want to work on the side of good? What if we're very definitely on the side of not okay people? I mean, this is the periphery. And happy birthday and anniversary, Cookie Mama. Well, thanks for bringing that to our attention, Diggs. And that's very sweet. Happy birthday and anniversary, Cookie Mama. Wherever you may be, I hope you're enjoying the shit out of it. All right, let's see. A clear and present Hatzer? Oh, that sounds great. I'd watch that movie. By your command. Crash the mech with no survivors. All right, reprimand. Yeah, look. Address both of their shortcomings. There we go. We'll just be like, hey, both of you make too much noise. I have a decibel meter, and if it clicks over, you're in trouble. It clicked over. You're in trouble. All right, and here we go. Oh, there we go. Just nothing like fold in space. Just jump and casually stretch and freak out as your clocks resynchronize and you don't think about where you've been. Because you technically haven't been anywhere. You've just arrived. But you haven't. It's a bit mind-stretchy. Oh, that looks safe to accelerate into. That's gonna be fucking expensive. Damn it. It's gonna be expensive. Why are there so many asteroids here? Why? Oh well. Ah yes, the heads for Red October. Don't make me get my noise thermometer. Don't make me get my therapin. <laughs> Imagine if you had a, a, a theremin and you used it for like music therapy. You're like, let me get my therapy theremin out and we can jam about our feelings. And they're like, nope. 100% reliable, don't need to do that, sir. And it's like, oh, you sound like you're blue. And then you have the theremin out, and you're like, Meow. And they're like, oh, God, please, no. It's kind of the equivalent of, like, Dr. Crusher doing those plays in TNG. They save the universe, like, a dozen times, and then Dr. Crusher's like, I'm going to run a play. And they're like, I'd rather fight Klingons. It's it's one of those real moments in TNG. Like, oh yeah, that's I'd definitely rather fight Klingons than be in one of Crusher's plays. All right, it's thinking about it. One of these days. Uh huh. Yep. No. One of these. Uh. It, oh, there we go. All right. Cool. We're gonna start this mission mopping up, and there's a lot of work here. That's nice. So we're gonna go fight people. And, uh, the raven's gonna be hopefully not on the bottom of the ocean. We're gonna, of course, bring the Hetzer, uh, because this person named Beef in the Hetzer has been fantastic. Uh, very beefy, in fact. Yeah, Pharaoh is probably gonna live in an iron lung for the rest of their life. They're not doing very well. Uh... <laughs> They're having a bad time. I think Pharaoh is just sitting in there gurgling and they're trying to figure out how many brain cells are left. It's a bad time. Uh, when your mech explode, that happened. But uh, free healthcare, we've taken care of them. 
Um, we've given them all sorts of things, um, like bills for, uh, you know, blowing the Mac up. Now, the healthcare is free, but they do owe us for the Mac, so it, it has to be a bit of a trade off, you know. I need more RAM. I need a more powerful computer. It's one of those things where, like, my computer is usually the last one upgraded out of all the computers we work with, because this is not the render PC. Mike's got that thing. So I just only this year, like, re-upgraded, or not, no, replaced my, replaced and upgraded my uh, graphics card after, like, four years, four or five years. Which, given the price of stuff, I can understand. That sounds reasonable, right? I mean, the price of all that stuff with all the people doing crypto mining and all that shit, it's just like... How's it going? Then a lot of games that came out that had high-end graphics, I didn't give a shit about. I just looked at them and I just was like, oh yeah, that's a game. I mean, it looks good, but I don't want to play it. Standing by. All right, Hetzer's on a cliff. And we'll get there. Oh, I think this game is crunchy as is. I don't think there's anything that's going to make this better. It's just, I really don't notice the high-end uh, graphics draw. Because a lot of my favorite games are just old. Or bottlenecked in different ways. Like, Dwarf Fortress is bottlenecked by being single-core threaded. And so no beefy computer is really going to help you there. You're going to have to limit the size of, you know, your fort, your worlds, and many other things in order to get it to work as best it can. I've played some cyberpunk on the channel. I just got bored with it. Um, we, we literally just got bored with it. We were like, this is not for us. This is not the game we were promised. And we'll check in later, when it's more done. Might take some time, might take some many hands in the community. I'm sure it'll turn into something real nice. But the last I played it, you know, I called my car. And I was like, hello car, please arrive. And it, it fell in from uh, the sky on its roof and then honked at me and then burst into flames. And then I got charged money. And I said, well, that's enough of that. That was the last time I used a car on purpose in Cyberpunk. I just started stealing them after that. I, I, stopped, I stopped trying to have a car. I was just like, nope. All right, let's do some damage. Alright, let's get that raven out here. It just works. That's what they say now. Alright. Titus Urbanicus has taken the battlefield. Alright, here we go. Uh oh. Oh. An Orion? Acknowledged. Yeah! But if you look at games back in the day, they'd make stuff in assembly so it could run on everything. And nowadays it's like, hey, um, this barely runs. All right, the Hetzer's gonna get into range in theory at some point. The Hetzer will proceed forward at some point. It, there will be a, at some point. It, <sighs> the Hetzer's not that great, hey. but we're gonna do the best we can. And we learn by doing. That's what we do here. So, here we go. What do we got? An Orion? Or a spider? I don't like him. There you go. Boom! 
Alright, so whenever you find like light recon mechs, just destroy everything in their basic vicinity, the hole they crawled out of, the horse they rode in on, blow it all up. Mr. Nice. Clean's Magic Grid Square Eraser, for all intents and purposes, Long Tom's Aero Force Thumpers, make shit die. No one argues with smoking craters. The game has combined arms and big boom. Use it. Alright, what do we got? MRM 40? Yeah. Alright, Gaucho, let's get down the hill. Copy that. With the not a hunchback Shadowhawk, it's almost a hunchback 5H. Almost. What do we got? Alright, you know what? I'm gonna put the Infernos on him and make him take a nap. There we go. Fire. There we go. 50 heat. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, it's fine. That's more than enough to get him to have a problem. And if he shoots... Oh, he's got a Gauss rifle. Oh, sweet mother of salvage. Alright, everybody, get your angle grinders ready. <laughs> Payday's here. I'm not saying we're all pirates, but, you know... We have the right pirate attitude about these sorts of things. Alright, let's do this. Blap. Ooh! Ooh. Oh, he's panicked because he was on fire and then he ran forward and then he decided to have a run away because on fire. That's great. Oh, look. Maximum power. Man. That murking Irby is going to wreck something. Hetzer. Hetzer, 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 Hetzer. All right, Hetzer, speak for the audience. Now, let's see how you handle this. Wow, a perfect hit from long range at maximum range with a Hetzer. Holy God. Good job, Hetzer. Uh oh, has a lot of AC five or ten LBX. Alright, yeah, we're gonna need to get in and start taking these things apart. Alright, ooh, Hetzer. Arrow 4. Goodbye. Oh, don't worry about that building. There we go. Alright, what did they bring us? An Icarus 2? Ew. Well, blow him up. That Orion will be mine. Yes, Commander. Yeah, that Orion engine's about the size of a Warhammer, but I will also just use the Orion as an Orion. But I appreciate your eye for it. You're not wrong. Double time. Let's go. All right, Shadowhawk pilot, contributing to the fight now. Target acquired. Ooh, panicked. Yeah, let's make this happen. What's he gonna do? He's gonna back off. It's a light Gauss as well, which is desirable, but not for me. For the market. You know, for the market. Yes, we're going to go shoot the Moon Kaiser. Whoever that guy is. Oh, oh, oh. Alright, we're going to need to get the Raven in closer. 4X Raven, nothing too fancy. I can make it better later. One Orion slightly used low miles. Heading out. Low miles. Oh, bombast. And you missed, but you destroyed a building in the background and set it on fire. So that's really metal. And thus, I think equally cool, you know. I think that's equally cool. He's he's got just about the same amount of fun. Alright. Hets are gonna hits. Man, it's hard to get an angle where the Hetzer can actually see people, considering it's a crap weapon system. Alright. Oh, 
Uh, the Moon Kaiser is in charge of the Soviet Moonion. Okay. It's kind of complex. It's kind of headcanon. Something I made up once. Kind of silly, but when you need an imaginary bad guy, it works. Engaging. What's that? Missile? Yes. Commander. All right. And we're just going to walk over here and just give one of these. Ooh! Engine destroyed. God damn it. Now we have no engines and two heavy mechs. Oh, boy. That hurts so bad. Alright boys, we gotta get this going. Confirmed. Let's get this going, we got this. The Raven is now in combat, and some of its missiles fired in a Landing more or less intended direction. Meanwhile, Titus Urbanicus brings up the middle. Titus Urbanicus making his play. It's a hit. Icarus 2 has been taking a pounding. Alright, let's see what happens next. Wow, he's he's shooting back. He's letting us know that he doesn't like me. He's he's like he's he's written a very negative Yelp review in BattleTech Equivalency. I'm going to respond in BattleTech Equivalency with AC20. Hetzer, 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 Hetzer. Here we go. Good day. What is with this thing? This is a majestic creature today. Hetzer has hetzed again. What in the fuck? I'm not asking for upvotes or anything or in trying to push you guys into reacting or going wild, but what the fuck, Hetzer? It's not even a good pilot driving it. The Hetz has spoken. Wow. No regrets, sir. Drive the Hetzer. I just, I don't even know what to say. Good job, Hetz. MVP from downtown the Hetzer has spoken I can get spider mech parts and there's no engine oh wait there's a 240 engine core mm-hmm that is what I want and then there's an Orion part give to me the Orion part Wow yeah, in before this is just the fever dream of a Hetzer pilot. Like, he's laying in bed, punching his fists. And he's like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. He's like having a dream. You see what I mean? He's just sitting there laying back, punching the ceiling. Like, I'm the, uh, I'm the hero. And like, you know, everyone like gives him like hugs and pie and everything he wants. And like his, his parents come back from the liquor store. And you know he he just has all that, and then he he comes to and realizes no, he 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 just managed to get it running again, and the fumes overcame him like they always do. So he needs to open the hatch. I know that sounds grim, but it's probably realistic. Oh, Davion's eh? Uh huh. Davion's, eh? So let's go into the uh, mech bay and see what we have going on here. So we have that Warhammer that's most of a Warhammer. We have an Orion we could probably maybe fix with an Orion, maybe? That yes, Please yes, we fighting. do. We got most of an Orion. And we could make a primitive commando, which we won't. Because, good God. All right, but... We now have an Orion, which means they have fucked up. They gave us an Orion. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and uh huh. Because if I go into my storage, I already have like one complete javelin, and I can get rid of it for it's not worth a lot. I don't give a shit. 
But now I have an Orion. Orion here. Narc Launcher, LV-10X, LRM-20. This thing's worth a fortune. Man, the Hetzer really is lucky. Well, at any rate, that's how we do this shit. I've had about enough fun as I can have on a Tuesday. I need to return to the grind. Thank you guys for watching the history video, and thank you guys for uh, making sure that people watched it probably against their will. Thank you, everyone, who helped get the word out, supported it, and everything else. Uh, the Hunchback is being worked on, among other things. Uh, I think we could get this done by late summer, if not fall. But it's a really good episode so far. And we've got other things in the works, including an advanced draft on the Black Knight. It's quite good. So thank you guys for tuning in. Thanks for the upvotes. Thanks for the love. And please, please do remember to take care of each other if you can. I'm going to spin this fucking mech just to act like a child, though. Oh, hell yes. This is the battle tech I deserve. See you guys later.